Welcome, Dr. Joshi. For those listening who don't know Dr. Sheetal Joshi, she is the professor in the Department of Anatomy and a nodal officer for body donation at Lady Hardinge Medical College, Delhi, who is an expert on the topic of body donation. Today, she will be sharing her extensive knowledge on the topic of body donation and answering some common questions. Thank you, Dr. Joshi, for taking time out for us. Oh, thank you so much. It's my pleasure, and always wonderful to be with Organ India. Thank you, ma'am. So, ma'am, we have a couple of questions ready for you regarding the topic of body donation. Getting into it. So, our first question for you is a very basic one. What is body donation for those of us who don't know? Now, body donation, to put it in very simple words, it's like donating your whole body. When I mean it's going to a medical college where we are teaching first-year medical graduates, future surgeons and all aspects of postgraduate education, basically they dissect on a full body, right from skin to deeper organs. And for this, we actually need voluntary donors. So body donation facilitates, you know, basically the donation towards a medical college. Okay. So a body donation is basically where a person can donate his body for the purposes of medical research. Am I getting it right? Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. It can be medical research, it can be education, or some kind of a training workshop also, especially the processes being made for, you know, which we transplant, so those can be also studied by, you know, dissecting out these bodies and making these artificial processes. Okay, I completely understand. So, ma'am, uh, another question that we have, since we at Organ India get a lot of questions and a lot of calls regarding body donation, mainly regarding how can we donate our bodies, what is the procedure, where do we sign up? So, ma'am, can you please tell us a brief answer for all these questions, as in, like, what is the procedure for a layman? Um, basically, anyone above the age of 18 years can opt or, you know, pledge for body donation. So once you've decided to pledge, it's very important that you take the consensus of your family because when you sign the pledge form, it's very mandatory that it should be countersigned with, you know, the witnesses, especially your first degree relatives who are from your family supporting your decision. Correct. Because basically after your death, what happens is the family who owns the body. So in case if they don't agree with your decision of body donation, the process after your death becomes difficult. So basically body donation in any, for that matter, even organ donation, it's a family decision. So that's the first thing you discuss with your family. Once you have held a discussion with your family and you are on the same page, you can go ahead signing a pledge form. Now this pledge form is available with all, you know, government medical colleges and even the private medical colleges. And there are a lot of NGOs. One is definitely Organ India who has been, you know, working very hard on organ and body donation. So they also provide you these pledge forms. Once you sign up these pledge forms and get it countersigned by the witnesses, you are registered with these medical colleges or NGOs. And uh, whenever that fortunate time comes, if you have already registered, then the procedure becomes very simple for the medical colleges to know that it was your wish and becomes easier for the family to donate the body. But even if otherwise, even if you have not signed the form, even when you were alive, if your family decides to donate a loved one's body, then even that is a rightful decision. But a signed pledge form is always an add-on so that we don't have to get the NOC of the police. So basically, signing a pledge form is just giving your consent that yes, you were interested in such a deed after your death. Hmm. So ma'am, in your answer, you mentioned that a person who is above the age of 18 can uh, donate his body. So ma'am, can you tell me, is it possible for a person who is below the age of 18 to donate their body as well? Uh, there is a provision for a body which is below the age of 18 as long as both the parents have consented. And we have situations where uh, the person is not having a parent, uh, maybe hmm. a single parent, and then even that single parent could, you know, take the uh, onus, but in few cases, ethically, we don't allow where there are no loved ones who have come forward in taking up this decision. So in that case, we have to procure a police NOC okay. when the person is below 18 years. And especially, you know, the ones who are mentally disabled. So mm. again, their custody is with their parents. So if their parents, you know, they are consenting to say a yes, then we can take a donation. Uh, most of the time, the medical colleges, we also have these newborn babies which have certain, you know, congenital anom anomalies. 
So few of the parents really want, you know, the doctors to study what was the reason of death. So in such a case, to show these rare anomalies, we do accept donations from the newborn or full-term babies, which are, you know, some parents have donated to us so that we can study these things. So this is a few rare of the situations, Correct. but we do accept donations, you know, which are below the age of 18. Got it, ma'am. So, ma'am, um, can you please tell us what is the necessary paperwork that is required for um, the process of body donation for a person who doesn't know? Once, you know, a person donates a body, once the death has been declared, so we require a general practitioner to declare the death as a natural death because uh, the body donation happens only in natural death. When I mean natural death, it means that either the heart or the lungs have stopped working naturally. So when we use the term heart attack, so if the heart starts failing, obviously the lungs also start failing or vice versa. So such a death is called as, you know, a natural death and it is certified by a practitioner. So we require that certificate that the person has been declared as, you know, from cardiac arrest or natural death. The second, we require the pledge form if you have, if the person had failed during his lifetime. And the thirdly, a police NOC in case of there is some dispute in the family or otherwise it's not that mandatory if the family is together in that decision. Okay. So these are the few things which are required for a successful donation. So ma'am, especially now in the times of COVID where they have a lot of issues regarding health reasons and issues, I've heard that some hospitals, they don't take bodies for um, body donation, as in they reject those bodies. So ma'am, can you tell me some reasons for which a person may not be able to donate their body? Yeah, there are quite a few, especially in any type of donation for that matter, if you have any infectious cause. Because in all these cases, when we take body donations, if there has been an infection, we don't know how it will be in, you know, how the body has caught, especially the unknown infections. Like we had this pandemic recently, and we are still going through a bad phase. So we were unable to accept donations because not much of studies are done on bodies, how the virus must have survived in the dead. So yeah. we can't risk so many medical students after such a donation happens. Mm. So, you know, basically unknown infections we avoid. Another uh, major reason where we avoid taking body donations are especially the advanced stage of carcinomas. Because what happens when you have a body of a type 4, you know, stage 4 carcinoma, when we are releasing the fluid in the body to preserve it, it is unable to reach all the parts. So the basic purpose for which the family has donated is not, you know, being successful in the real sense because those parts really don't get the perfusion of the preservative and yeah. those parts are wasted then. So we always, you know, have an open discussion about the history of the donor so that we can come to a consensus whether the body can be accepted. Especially, you know, even which are bedridden patients, they get these huge deep so uh, bed sores so again, when we try to inject these areas, these areas are very compressed. And again, the fluid doesn't reach these areas. So these are the rare situations where we really have to say no, unfortunately, for such donations. Um, you mentioned the word carcinoma. For any of our listeners who don't know what it means, can you like simplify, our, uh, simplify it? Uh, yeah, the carcinomas basically are cancers, oh, which okay. are of type you know, they are staged into different advancements. And if you see, it, they mostly spread through vessels, lymphatics and blood right. vessels. And this is the area through which we, you know, pass the fluid also. So in okay. case there is, those are which are blocked in stage cancers, which are advanced ones. So the fluid also fails to reach these areas. Got it, ma'am. Ma'am, so say a person has donated their body to the medical research. So how is that body preserved? As in, what is the process after the body is donated to the medical uh, institute for research okay and basically once they complete the whole paperwork of body donation what we do is we have a machine which is you know uh, pressure generated we if you open up one of the vessels in the neck or the leg and we inject a fluid called as formalin and this is a procedure which is known as embalming and once that whole 5 litre fluid is pushed into the body, we let the body set. Now, that setting up process, like to preserve the body, it needs to be in that fluid for almost, you know, 15, 16 days. It sets in that fluid. And then we put it in a tank and preserve it. 
Once the body is set in that fluid, it doesn't degenerate. It only discolors the skin. So the skin of the body mm. becomes a bit on the darker shade. And you can utilize this body for any of the aspects, research, teaching, training, over a period of one year or one and a half year. The few organs which we retried, we can also, you know, preserve them in the form of museum specimens. So it's oh, always yes. very nice, you know, some people who fill in the pledge form, they have these small wishes that please mount my you know, brain, please mount my heart. So, you know, we really like when donors come with such positive attitudes to fill their pledge forms that they want their brain preserved. They want their heart to be in being in the museum. So we keep few organs for even longer than what they, you know, it's been, when we use it, we can keep it for even 10 years in a preservative. Wow. So that's how we go about. That's very endearing to hear that these many positive people, people come with such positive attitudes when it comes to mm -hmm. body donation because it can be very scary, you know, from a person, from a current situation, uh, current perspective. But, um, very true, is, but a uh, few people, you know, they are uh, so giving and they're so positive even when they come. I remember one of my donors telling me, oh, you know, I just got operated for an uh, appendicitis and I'm poor thing, the student who will dissect on me, he'll not be able to see the appendix, but the rest of the part he'll be able to dissect. So they have very, you know, different notions about body donation. And that's like a really a learning process for all of us. Correct. So ma'am, on a closing note, do you have any examples of body donation case that, you know, stands out in your memory where you can just, where which you just clearly remember and you know you hold a kind of dear to your heart uh, the most recent donation i can say just before the pandemic in 2019 20 i remember that year we had this donation of a family uh it was basically a family who had six brothers and sisters and uh, when their father died it was his wish to donate his body to a medical college so they had been with us and when they came to the department, usually when families come, they're very sad that they have lost somebody. And it's very difficult to hit a conversation with them. Mm. And few families, but this is one of the family which was very positive during the donation. Uh, they all came, you know, together, all the brothers and sisters. And they actually, we hold a prayer service in our department after the donation is being received. And they had so many stories and positive things to talk about their father. And uh, they literally made it, you know, the occasion was not like a sad moment. It was like a festival for them that mm. they have fulfilled their father's last wish. Wow. And they said, Ki, Papa, yahan pe khush so, you know, they were making us feel so that we are living with him today. And we had received that donation with so much of love and so much of affection that, you know, that moment was not a sad moment for them. Yeah. It was the most happiest moment. And it spread so much of positivity. So I feel, you know, any kind of donation, when you give it with your whole happiness, the value of that donation actually changes the level, you know, with what you have given. Correct. So that was a very positive kind of a message which we got from that story. And that was a great story to end things off. I think everyone listening will truly end it off on a high note. They'll be happy and they'll be inspired to donate their body and, you know, help out in the process of medical research. So, ma'am... Yes. You, you know, donors are the ones which actually, you know, make good doctors from us. Correct. If we don't have a proper training, I feel, you know, the whole these four and a half years of MBBS or even postgraduate, they require a persistent working on the body because it's very difficult to learn on a live body. So thank you, uh, Dr. Sheetal Joshi, ma'am, um, for taking time out for us and, you know, sharing your information on this topic. I'm sure the listeners have gained value from this interview. And... Um, I hope that any person who listens to this just feels a little bit more inspired to donate their body and, you know, help out in the medical research uh, for the country. Thank you so much. Thank you.